So after Donald Trump refused to commit to a peaceful transfer of power a couple of weeks ago at the vice presidential debate, Mike Pence was asked, will you commit to a peaceful transfer of power in the event you lose this election? And if you watched it, you'd know that he dodged that question. We did not get an answer from him. And if you don't get an answer to that very simple question, that means the answer is no. Now, this is alarming considering the fact that just a couple of weeks ago in an article for The Atlantic, Barton Gelman explains how Trump's legal team has a strategy for Donald Trump to potentially remain in power even if Joe Biden wins by basically appointing his own electors, where states are controlled by Republicans, to the Electoral College to overturn the results of certain states if it is in fact close. Now, since that article was published, the situation has worsened. And when I say the situation has worsened, I mean that in Donald Trump's political orientation, he is becoming more and more authoritarian. It's no longer just the way that he acts. It's what he is doing, using the powers that he has as president of the United States to undermine democracy. And what he's doing now is calling on his attorney general to indict his political opponent just weeks before an election. And as Jenny Fink of Newsweek explains, on Thursday, Trump told Fox Business's Maria Bartiromo that Biden and Obama spited his campaign and urged Attorney General Will Barr to indict them because we got plenty, you don't need any more. Without an indictment, Trump said, we'll get little satisfaction and he won't forget it. Now, first of all, understand that I think that when people at his crowd chanted lock her up in 2016, that was problematic, sure, but I think that the media made a bigger deal out of it than it was in actuality, but now this is a different scenario because Donald Trump isn't just some political outsider trying to obtain power, now he has power. So when he actually does directly call for one of his political opponents to be investigated or indicted for bogus reasons, that should scare everyone because this is what we see in authoritarian regimes, this is what dictators do. Now, what he's basically arguing is that, well, you know what, there's evidence that in 2016, the FBI spied on my campaign. Now, it is true that when Obama was in power, intelligence communities investigated his campaign to determine whether or not there was any Russian interference. We all know the story. But what Trump is basically arguing here is that, well, because... Under Obama's watch, even if Obama didn't explicitly direct the FBI to investigate my campaign, the fact that as president it happened, that's good enough. Indict them. Indict my political opponent because intelligence agencies spied on me. That's what he's arguing. Now, it's interesting to me that Trump's argument effectively is spying is unacceptable if it happens to me, but if we're spying on the American people doesn't matter, because as Ken Klippenstein of The Nation reports, federal agencies wiretapped the phones of protesters in Portland. On top of that, at the local level in San Francisco, police illegally spied on protesters. Now, Donald Trump's administration, as well as Obama's administration, wanted to prosecute Edward Snowden, who was a whistleblower who unveiled a massive unconstitutional and unlawful surveillance state being carried out by the NSA. Does Donald Trump want Obama and Biden to be indicted because of what the NSA did under their watch? No, because he's doing the same thing. He only is against spying if it happens to him. And really, he knows that there's not a lot here to work with because all of the things that he's accusing Obama for, if he believes that Obama and Biden can be indicted because the FBI surveils a campaign or anyone, you can be indicted for that too. But what Trump is trying to do here is use this story for purposes of political gain. He doesn't believe that Biden did anything that warrants an indictment. But if Biden were to be indicted just weeks before an election, that would definitely have an impact on the election. It could tip the scales in Donald Trump's favor. So this is a problem because he's using his institutional power as president as an incumbent president who's seeking re-election to direct federal agencies explicitly to criminally investigate his main political opponent right before an election. And, you know, it's not just his main political opponent. He retweeted a tweet from Judicial Watch that calls for Ilhan Omar to be investigated for some reason or the other. Now, I will say it's not inherently an abuse of power for, you know, a sitting president or administration to investigate 
anyone who has power or even who may be a political opponent if there's evidence that they are culpable of some wrongdoing. So, for example, when it was the case that Kelly Loeffler, Dianne Feinstein, and Jim Inhofe were busted for insider trading when they dumped their stocks after they were briefed on the severity of COVID-19 and they knew that the market would crash, that investigation was not controversial. The only controversial thing about that investigation is that it didn't result in any of them being indicted. But the point is, the investigation itself was legitimate. But when you just throw around, you know, let's investigate this person or that person under a dubious proposition, when you weaponize the legal system for your own political gain, that's where we start getting into some really murky territory, dictatorial territory. Republicans aren't even trying to hide the fact that they no longer favor democracy. But it's not just Donald Trump, because Republican Senator Mike Lee tweeted, we're not a democracy. Now, my response to that is, all right, you know, I kind of agree to an extent, but let's change that. Let's make our system more democratic. Let's enhance our democracy. But that's not what he's saying. He is vocalizing his disdain for democracy, because in another tweet, he adds, democracy isn't the objective. Liberty, peace, and prosperity are. We want the human condition to flourish. Rank democracy can thwart that. I'm going to repeat the last two sentences. We want the human condition to flourish. Rank democracy can thwart that. In other words, I'm not in favor of democracy unequivocally. I don't believe that democracy and further democratizing the United States of America is a good thing that we should do. You have a sitting United States senator openly expressing his reservations about democracy. And honestly, it's shocking, but it's not too surprising because the Republican Party for years now has been shifting further and further to the right. And you can only shift so far to the right until you arrive at authoritarianism. And we are now seeing them enter explicitly authoritarian territory where they're not even pretending to care about democracy. The facade is gone. They're just out right now attacking democracy. Now, it was always the case that Republicans did not like democracy because they've literally tried to suppress democracy in order to gain power for years. I mean, in Iowa, the Trump campaign just successfully got 100,000 ballots invalidated. And in Texas, the Republican governor, Greg Abbott, invalidated a decision that would have expanded the locations where voters can drop off absentee ballots. So now, because of what he did, there's just one drop off location in each county, which means that if you don't have access to reliable transportation, you may not be able to drop off your ballot altogether. This is voter suppression. Now, we're not even talking about the 2018 election where Brian Kemp, as Georgia Secretary of State, used his power, his institutional power, to purge hundreds of thousands of voters from the rolls, mostly people of color, which ended up leading to him winning that election, which was effectively a stolen election. So the point is, Republicans have always had to or tried to suppress the vote because that's the only way that they can win elections. But what's changing now is that the facade is disappearing. It's going away. Now, you could make the case, well, look, maybe it's better that they just be upfront with us and tell us that they hate democracy. I would argue, no, the facade is better than no facade, even though it's disingenuous, because when you start explicitly saying maybe democracy isn't the best thing, that actually has a cultural impact. Their base picks up on that. And the Republican Party's base is indeed following them as they move closer and closer towards openly embracing authoritarianism, because as David Eggert and Ed White of AP reports, agents foiled a stunning plot to kidnap Michigan Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer, authorities said Thursday in announcing charges in an alleged scheme that involved months of planning and even rehearsals to snatch her from her vacation home. Six men were charged in federal court with conspiring to kidnap the governor in reaction to what they viewed as her uncontrolled power, according to a federal complaint. Separately, seven others were charged in state court under Michigan's anti-terrorism laws for allegedly targeting police and seeking a civil war. A few hours later, Whitmer pinned some blame on President Donald Trump, noting that he did not condemn white supremacists in last week's debate with Joe Biden and instead told a far-right group to stand back and stand by. Hate groups heard the president's words
words, not as a rebuke, but as a rallying cry, as a call to action, Whitmer said, when our leaders speak, their words matter, they carry weight. The six men charged in federal court plotted for months, consulting and training with members of a group that federal authorities described as a militia and undertaking rehearsals in August and September, according to an FBI affidavit. They were arrested Wednesday night and face up to life in prison if convicted. Now, I should remind you that back in April, when far-right extremists protested Governor Whitmer's lockdown because of COVID-19, Donald Trump tweeted in all caps, liberate Michigan. And months later, we learn that domestic terrorists literally tried to do what Trump wanted them to do. Quote, unquote, liberate Michigan by overthrowing their state's democratically elected governor. Now, these terrorists are not representative of the average conservative, right? But what we are seeing is that over time, gradually, conservatives, Republicans, mostly Donald Trump supporters, are losing faith in democracy. And they're not losing faith in democracy because, you know, uh, they've lost a lot of elections and they feel like they can never win. They're losing faith in democracy while their guy is in power, meaning that they think he doesn't have enough power. Therefore, maybe if he had more power, if he was a dictator, things would be better. We can actually do what he wanted to do. Just a couple of years ago, one of Donald Trump's supporters said, you know, I never thought that I would want a dictator, but if there is going to be a dictatorship in America, I would want Trump to be that dictator. Never in my life did I think I would like to see a dictator, but if there's going to be one, I want it to be Trump. Now, I get what you're going to say. That's just one lady. That's a single anecdote, so it doesn't amount to much. Yes, but I would counter by saying, go to YouTube, um, go to the comment section of any article where, you know, someone, a commentator or a journalist is talking about how problematic it is that Donald Trump refuses to commit to a peaceful transfer of power, and you see conservatives openly celebrating that fact, not thinking that what he's doing is undemocratic, but thinking that what he's doing actually is necessary to save democracy. So either they don't believe in democracy at all, and they've lost faith in it, and they openly want a dictatorship, or they still at least buy into the idea that democracy is a good thing, but they think that Trump taking, you know, action to undermine democracy is actually better for the long-term health of democracy. Either way, they've embraced undemocratic tactics. And I've got to tell you, this should worry you. If you're not worried, this should worry you. Because democracy doesn't work if there's no buy-in. If people who exist in society no longer believe that democracy is a legitimate form of government, that democracy cannot survive. This is why in, you know, newly democratized regimes around the world, democracies are so fragile and they end up slipping back into authoritarian regimes or illiberal democracies because, you know, it takes time to get a democracy to the point where all of society believes in it. Like it has to be ingrained culturally in a country in order for it to really have a lasting effect. But what we are seeing right now is the delegitimization of democracy. And I would argue that, sure, there are reasons to be dissatisfied with democracy because, you know, uh, we are seeing it be eroded over time with Citizens United and certain things, you know, our institutions being eroded. But if people in this country are just outright saying democracy may not cut it any longer, that's a problem. And what we are witnessing openly now is democracy becoming a partisan issue. When democracy itself becomes a partisan issue, only bad things can come afterwards. And it's not unusual for democracy to be a partisan issue. In some authoritarian regimes where they actually allow you know, opposition parties to run, some of them do put democracy on the platform. Now, they know that that will never happen because they don't have the power, but it's a partisan issue. In developing countries, you know, democracy may be on the platform of an emerging political party. And I mean, look, I shouldn't have to explain why this is troublesome. We're seeing a party shift so far to the right that they don't even pretend to care about democracy. They're openly trying to undermine democracy. And it's not just Donald Trump and Mike Pence anymore. It's the Republican Party and their base who is doing this.
who's embracing authoritarianism. And this is only the beginning. 